But yeah, so it should be interesting, right? Because Polish veterans actually put on like a really good underdog performance uh, last week. Uh, yeah, who is it they beat? Team Liquid. So, uh, oh, team Liquid. Team <laughs> the team line. Liquid. Yeah. <laughs> I, always, I always like mentally connect TL with Team Liquid. Um, so yeah, they played against the line last week. Um, and they won, f- I think, 4-1 in the end. But I can't remember the exact score. I've actually yeah. got a clip of my f- new favourite player, uh, Wadzu absolutely tearing shit up from Ginger Slushy's stream last week. He took out three or four heavy tanks, I think. So let's take a look at that quickly. Realize... Oddfin doesn't realize they're there either. Let's see. Let's see, this is from I don't the think they realize that this infantry is um, coming in all around them, though. These guys need to get back in that tank quick. Uh, Mr. Prez so goes down. Bunch of rats. What's is Wadzu gonna get the satchel off? Oh, no. Oh no. He gets the satchel off with true power right here. Oh, uh, he does not more, know. See some more nonsense and shenanigans like that out of out of Wadzi this week. And SME is going to be the map to do it, right? Like, there's plenty of places you can sneak up on the heavy tanks on this map. What do you think? Sorry, I've just loaded into the game and it's on MD. Yeah, and what's all, what's up with these fucking planes? Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very loud. <laughs> yeah, uh, new SMDM engine. feature. So, how do we feel about Wadzu? Do we reckon he's going to be sneaking up on uh, many tanks this week? I SMA? hope so. Like, and this is something when I was casting APL that I loved as well. Like, seeing these these teams that don't play like strictly to the meta like uh, like we'd expect KSPT to do like we'd expect greyhounds uh, us as well obviously and, and you get all these weird and wonderful plays and i fucking i love it like it, it just genuinely makes less me happy to see. yeah not not breaking the mold a bit exactly and uh, i think it's just such a fun way to to approach the game and i can respect that for sure and then, so what What would you say ESPT is most well-known for? Because I think, personally, for me, their record speaks for itself in a number of ways. I mean... Well, other than before... breaking seasonal rules, um, I would say ESPT... I mean, we know they're going to send a couple of SLs round to get sneaky garrisons up if they you know, get stalled on a front line. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see... To see them approach the game like Greyhounds did against, um, well, SLK today actually, but also yeah, on um, Wix's stream, they tried to blitz yeah. around the blitz yeah, around so the map might... edge with a couple of supply trucks and stuff right off the bat. Yeah, and obviously it didn't work out for Greyhounds this time. I think I saw <laughs> at one point they had they literally almost, no They nearly lost the mid cap. They almost yeah. lost the mid cap as well off the bat, but like Muck Snapper managed to pull it back. So yeah, I think you're right. And it, for me, I think ESPT are most well known for being. Um, how do I say this? Like terminal runners up. Uh, other That's than, a very kind way of putting it. Yeah. Other than I mean, you know, other than the APL victories, right? Like the second in seasonal, second in HCA. You know, they're they're like they're missing the magic final piece. I would say that that really brings a team from the you know the the top five or the top three to being the top team. There's like there's always got to be a special little piece of chemistry or something, you know, and like, and maybe it's just like maybe it's discipline. I don't know if like that's that's what it is. I think you know a lot of the European teams have German discipline. You know, they've got like these players that really like drag you, like kicking and screaming to play the game right. But as you can see from this this clip that I'm just gonna play, uh, in the north, this is from last week's game. Which is oh, yeah, I it's just his mage being killed repeatedly. Hey, we're on getting fucked on the north side of hard cap. Heavy on my pick. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one. I think this um, yeah, the last hope for hard cap. This team killing was completely great. Death. Um, oh, they got the I think, I think I've kind of said, um, all I all I have to say on it. So. I, I won't dwell too much, but I think in general they're quite a disciplined team. You know, I think um, from casting before, I cast with Half Royal, uh, an APL game, 
and he was saying they have like these win these conditions that they need to meet to push the next point, for example. So they'll need to have okay. set up in a certain well, way and that's some insight I didn't have. So, you know, like from playing frontline against him it always feels a bit like uh trying to punch fog. You kill one person or you sneak through and then there's no one, you know? So like I my my interpretation as a frontline player is someone that thinks, you know, I've killed one person so now I can like go go for it, right? So maybe you know, maybe that is what I thought was indiscipline was actually discipline of them being where they need to be rather than where you necessarily expect them to be, which is an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, so I think uh, you know, this isn't this isn't the first of spree game I've cast or well, I guess co cast. Um and I, I think it's something we can look at during the game if um, if it gets, you know, it's not a steamroll, basically. Um, we'll see them, like, approach certain areas and take them, hold them, and then they'll feel comfortable to bring everything up. Yeah, for uh, sure. And move on to the next point. And then, of yeah, course, you'll have, I don't know, is Fear not playing? Um, uh, I've I've got the roster up on my screen now. Oh, so you have, so, yeah. Fear not playing. Uh, uh, you know, he... He loves that that sneaky backline, Garen. You know. Um, yeah, that is true. That is true. Zoom all the way around. I don't know if he does it on his fucking belt buckle and and like goes full <laughs> military training mode and and, <laughs> and crawls, or if he takes a truck oh, after, mate, yeah. after it. But he will he will do that for sure. Um, You've got people like Mikey, Hitman Alex, Excel, who asked me to say he was cute. Um, so plugging Excel now. But well done for. Stepping up and helping organise seasonal, so fair play. We've also got people like uh, Polo Loco, who's my personal uh, evil nemesis, who I hate because uh, he he learned to rocket snipe my he watches my MG vods and then learns to rocket snipe my MG positions at the start of the game. He's a bastard. I mean, He's I can a true, respect real tenacity. bastard. Like, and then he sends me messages about it after the game, and it makes me even more upset. So you know, you've got to respect it as much as I hate it. I respect it. You know. Yeah, some um, of the like just scanning through the lineup now. I don't see Convenant um, unless uh, he's signed up under a different name. But no, I think they will got... see it off. The top, I couldn't see it off the top of my head. But you know, Inchon's going to be in command as usual. Adam's going to be on RT. Well, you say you, but I haven't seen Inchon commanding too much recently. Oh, it was woman repellent last week, wasn't it? But I kind of just assumed woman yeah. repellent was. Inchon under a different name, to be honest with you. <laughs> no comment. Um, <laughs> uh, um, who else have we got? We've got, I, I can see see on there, um, six puck club as well. You know, the, the couple Brims of tanks is up there, there, I think. Chris. No, it's, yeah. pretty, it's a pretty good roster from ESPT. I mean, it's missing a couple of names, so maybe, you know, like one or two names are missing from there that you'd expect from, like, the Ultra S tier ESPT roster, but most of the infantry... Uh, most of their infantry seems to be there, right? And infantry has always been the biggest strength of ESPT, and I think they've been let down yeah. by their tanks. Yes, and that that's why I sort past. of bring up um, bring up guys like uh, Sea Unicorns, um, Sick Butch Clutch. I think Mars Rover as well. Their tankers, like in general, are a big uh, sticking point for them. I think um, I, I don't want to like. Blast these guys, obviously. Um, but oh, it's, a bit it's hard. Um, yeah, you know when you look at how they play um, with their tanks and and playing against their tanks as well, it's just like very very. Um... <sighs> I can't say what I want to say. I feel like I'm being rude, um, but like uh, it's a definite weakness for them. Um, yeah, I think, and I you think can have like, the definitely infantry, like but... the biggest difference. I mean, I, I know I said like discipline is like a big difference between like S plus and S tier teams, right? And the SPT mm -hmm. is no shadow of a doubt is an S tier team, right? But the, the difference I think is not even necessarily the skill of the individual crews, but it's how the crews communicate with each other and coordinate, right? And if, if you're missing, like I said like earlier, that magic that makes you transcendent, if you're missing that magic, then that's... The one of the things that you're always going to struggle with, right, is um, is winning if you can't tank. Like, if you can't coordinate your tanks and your infantry at the same time. It's, yeah. it's, it's not easy. And I think a big problem as well um, is that Esprit have a tank from 75th, they've got a tank from 10M, 10th MD, and 
you know, I, I just wonder if there's some inter milsim uh, friction there that stops them working <laughs> as well together as possible. Yeah, it's there's the there, I don't know, dude. Like, there's 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 always going to be something that makes it hard, and like, and on on the, the the Polish veteran side, I I personally don't I can't speak to many of these players personally. I, I think LJT is an interesting guy to play with. He's a cool commander. I played with him in plenty of events, and he'd be commanding tonight. And as we said, we've been jerking off Wadzu for his plays last week as well, because obviously he was taking out tanks left, right, and centre. But outside of that. I I can't say I know many of the the PV guys, but they're they're actually doing okay in ECL as well. You know they've won two out of their three games I think, so they're they're second in the yeah. the ECL league. So you know like they've it, won two out of three, but the one they lost was five nil to Fins. Um, to Fins. Yeah, Fins yeah. at loose, and it's interesting seeing them going from like beating BFTB, who I would say uh like. They're a mid -table probably stronger team. than yeah. They're stronger than Finns, I would have thought. Oh, they're um, Div One competitive two ECL, right? So, well, I think they are Div Two technically. Well, but... BF, well, it depends on how you want to look at it, right? <laughs> if you look at the official fucking things, they're, they're Div Two. But um, it, it's like I, w it's just a surprising run of results, and I don't know if maybe they are like a bit the of an inconsistent last week. team. Yeah. I mean, it's um, a develop. Like, if you put it this way, right? Like, it's a developmental roster with a fair number of recruits. But it seems to me that, if, judging by last week's performance against the line, they've got a number of players that are willing to take risks and make plays on the map that might not necessarily be your first thought of a play, right? And if you're yeah. willing to make an unconventional play as a mid-table team. That's where you've got to seize the moment. You're not gonna. You're unlikely to beat a, an S tier team like ESPT by making conventional plays unless you are the same level as them, right? Yeah, exactly. I think you're not gonna out out frontline them. You're not gonna out you know think them on that level. But if you can make a kooky airhead play like they did last week, then that's your moment to to make a bit of magic and give us the underdog upset that we'd all like to see. Honestly, if, if PB could do that and somehow beat Esprit, that would be, <laughs> I would say, probably the biggest upset of the tournament. I can honestly say that, 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 I can, I can see that, you know, like, that would be crazy. And they're playing SME, right? And SME is, it's such a weird map for me. Like, I love it and I hate it. Like, I've really enjoyed the last few games we played. Obviously, we beat. See, I've hated um, it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember you saying, "I've but just been miserable." 82 AD, we beat a spree. We beat someone else as well, and it, I've been having fun on this map, even though I've been like, kind of really against us picking it for a little while. Yeah, I mean, um, like, it, ESPT are going to be playing Axis, and that gives them a huge advantage if they get Hospice. But I think there's like a realistic world in which Polish veterans can capture uh, the central point first, right, as allies. Yeah, I mean, even with the the skill disparity between the two teams, I'd still expect PV to to put up a really good fight on SME and, and yeah. potentially cap it. You know, I think hopefully and even that's checkpoint you can you can make some magic happen on checkpoint. I think checkpoint's probably one of the most even 50-50 points, but hospice is very axis favoured, so ESPT are likely to just run away with it if if that's the case. You know. Yeah, but I mean, the last two weeks, um, Helios last night, and then us against eighty two in uh, in ECL the week before. Both hospice, both uh, ally wins, allies, uh, allied recap. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely possible. I think like it, it's kind of it's easy to cap first as access on hospice, but not necessarily easy to um, like get area control because of the alleys and because you have to cross the road. There's a lot of choke points that so it's quite hard to to get through. And if you've got well positioned light and recon tanks, it's really challenging to actually get get into the action in my experience anyway i think you just end up dying a lot and the artillery can be like really potent on hospice as well there's like loads of places you yes. can just drop shells for free and there's like extremely limited counterplay yeah i mean 
my experience of hospice is usually running, dying, running, dying, yeah. running, dying. Um, I think I died so... to Arty like six times in the first ten minutes versus... Uh... <laughs> was that it? Yeah, well, I mean, like, the first ten minutes I spent more time dead to Arty than I was like actually playing the game, you know? That was my reality until I got reassigned. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we'd seen a bit of like a left field map pick for this one. Yeah, um, I mean, it it was they were Polish vets were going to have SMDM access right, which could have been like a really good match, you know, because it's much more access favored than allies favored, right? So it could have been like definitely like a really like a closer match. But I think like the, the fairest way to, I mean, either they could have completely redone the the map bands, or they could have gone to. Uh, SME, which is like the previous ban, which is what they did, you know, which is like uh, it's an integrity move from Polish vets. Yeah, for sure. I can't I say I can't say I necessarily would have agreed with that. I would have just played it out on the favored map that's bugged, you know, like and just try your best to make an upset happen. Yeah, I don't think a spree would have offered them the same option if it was uh, the other way around. I'm not so sure either, but massive hats off to Polish veterans there. Yeah, I think that's a huge integrity move. Obviously. I've also noticed that they've replaced the glider models on SMDM with the new glider models, and I couldn't mount my MG on the glider wing anymore. My heart bleeds for you. Um. Yeah, uh, it's just uh, an upset, another upsetting thing. I didn't know. Oh yeah, their wings are a bit broken. Aren't the they? wings are yeah, the wings used to be slightly broken, so you could mount in the middle or mount off the edge on the top. And if you mount off the edge on the top now, you can't. Uh, pull the MG up particularly I mean this well. is such a, a big problem with how that loses uh, bipoding system development, I think. yeah the bipoding system as well but also just the fact that they're like hell bent on removing any sort of verticality from the game you know you see them removing some of the the window glitch spots you see them like removing access to God forbid to I have structures. to move my camera up at any point exactly the maps are so big, bro. You just need to look left and right. That's it. <laughs> so, it's so boring. Pretty. And like, if you try and mount on the ground, there's just like ten tons of grass in front of your face, so you can't ever actually see anything. So, but like, they can see you. Yeah, of course. You know, the, the grass only renders in for like 25, 30 meters, right? So you can't see anything if you lie down, but everyone else can see you. So it's like, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. Who, who knows? You know, it's just like. It's kind of dumb. What can you do? Dumb game. Kill it. Team 17, if you're listening, just, well, just kill the game. They, they, they certainly fun. appear to be trying. True. Make, <laughs> make it not Completely as fucking redundant transparent. And QA just, department. Uh... Yeah, just put us out of our misery, bro. Just after this season, though. I wish yeah. I didn't love oh, this game yeah. as much as I do, man. Like, that's the thing like i think it's the, the most frustrating thing for players like us is that we can see how good it could be and we're just constantly like riding the dragon of or like you know chasing the dragon of like oh but if they just did this right it could be so perfect you know it's yeah. like if you just made this tiny change if you just did this it'd like you know if you just made this marginally better you know if you just spent an extra 12 weeks in development on something instead of just rushing it to to production then like it just could be so much better but why would they do that when they can make night maps <laughs> true i like do you not like the magic fog bubble that is just like five meters in front you know the five meter radius fog bubble that just travels perfectly with you wherever you go not particularly, if I'm, no. if I'm being totally you, honest, no. Do you not do you not like when you play it on Kursk Night and then you go to the allied spawn on Kursk Night and then suddenly you have like 30 FPS even though the rest of the map runs at like 200 for no reason? Because the fog asset is just dross. Again, not particularly. Um, no? That's really surprising. I, I really want to play Kursk Night allies in a, in a match. Like, I think it could be a... A really fun map to play. Like, Curse Night Allies, please. Someone. I like. I kind of like the PPSH on Curse Night Allies. I won't lie. The PPSH is like kind of fun. I'm just becoming a PTRS main, and I just no cap. <laughs> one, one tap people. I was playing with it earlier. It's, it's so much fun. 
Thing it's kind beast. of like the shotgun, but actually on crack, you know. Yeah, like a much better range. <laughs> like easier to shoot. It's fucking nice. Just have to, obviously have to be uh, mounted. But just had news from um, the PV guys that they had a technical problem with the the server. So either they're going to change servers or they're going to fix it. And I'm not entirely sure which one yet. Have you checked if you got admin cam? Uh, oh yeah, I do have admin cam. Brilliant. I'm so zooming just, around. Just sharing your screen with me. And I can set up the. Julio Cameo. Some proper, proper Euro beats going on in the uh, in the HQ here. From <laughs> I Bone turned Jones. that voice off because I'm just like, I want to give the, the team some privacy. That's very respectable. I <laughs> I just turned uh, fucking Brock's chat on. Fair play. I respect it. Are you sharing your screen into Discord with me? And then I can just get that set up. No. I think it, it dropped off on the shoe. Okay. Let's check. You should come to Polish Fatter and spawn the moment. It's fucking chaos. Is it good vibes? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Someone's satcheling the arse guy in. Right, the dual cam is working, so we've got that set up nice. Lovely. Uh, tie it. There we go. Let's let's see what's cooking in in Polish veterans spawn. Holy shit, there's so many of them. Ooh, where am I? I'm in the middle one. Oh my god, there's a burning tiger. Do the flip. Oh mate, he hasn't done the Kindrick flip. He doesn't know. Do you know about the Kindrick flip? I don't know how you do it, but I've seen it. <laughs> I've been <laughs> Sorry, on the receiving every game it. before we play Axis SMDM. Uh, the first thing that happens is Kendrick will get in the P4. He'll drive it at this uh, this hedge I've got, this little um, this thing here, and then he'll force the uh, force the thing to do a flip for no reason. You know, like he just he does the flip and it, apparently it's lucky. And who am I to? Uh, well, hundred percent win rate. It must be working. Yeah, exactly. He's <laughs> teamed with the fucking music guy. Shit vibes now. Bring him back. Vibes are ruined. Right, PV on my chat saying they're ready. Okay. Uh, Burger is saying, did you know there are 1,775 previous Adams? I'm sorry, that's what's going on ESPT's chat. That's very important. Adam Forward to this. Should be a good game. Yeah, I mean, I just wish they'd, uh, wish they'd start. I'm kind of losing, not the will to live necessarily, but you know, I'm losing the ability to find things to talk about that are interesting and entertaining. And these guys aren't quite so um, concerned about doing a, a Sunday mass with me in the church in the morning, like a. Uh, Refuse and uh, GBI did last week, which I was I had a lot of fun with that game, and I, I hope I can cast like, either of those teams again. Uh, 
uh, in the coming weeks because that was like that was that was good vibes in that group. That was yeah, good vibes. love refuse, love GBI, both good guys. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of. Uh, I hate to say, it, but I'm a big fan of the French. You know, it feels wrong, doesn't it? Like, yeah, it really does. Being yeah. English, saying all something that. something oh, deep French, deep my my genetic ancestry says French people, but. No, you Sorry, can't I, always I hate everyone all the time. Pass. <laughs> Got so, some yeah. uh, French ancestry, so I, I can say it, but you can't. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I'm very Celtic. Slay already in the chat. All right, Slay. Oh yeah, I should get your get your Twitch chat up. That's one of the best things about being a co-caster is I can also just shit post a little bit. <laughs> what's happening? Can't do that when I'm actually casting. But... True, true. It's much harder. That is definitely fair to say. Looking quite smooth and ready to go on my end. Yeah, the, the server feels nice. I don't know what technical issues they're having. Maybe they've killed the HLLU bot as well. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know how. It was the first time we saw this like last week, right? So, other than that. Maybe they found some special Polish edge case to break it. How do you highlight like part of a message on Twitch? What's that sound like? What's one of the greyhounds did it? I did I, it in mine. I don't know. I'm not that smart at Twitch. Me neither. Barely get OBS to work. Much. Yeah, exactly, mate. It's just cha challenging. I, I've got some fucking absolutely cool, big satchel there. Um, I've got some goated music for everyone to listen to. It's the Kai theme from Kung Fu Panda 3 for my intro nice. today. I thought it went well with the Winnie the Pooh. I think that's lovely. <laughs> no, I've got to keep the people, got to give the people what they want. The people want Kung Fu Panda, obviously. I'm the people, and I want Kung Fu Panda. No. Oh, everyone's leaving the server. Oh shit, okay. Just saw... <laughs> Just saw the little blue dots disappear. Yeah, oh, they're going to 82 AD's server. Okay. I'll just send you the password quickly. Thank you. Well, sorry for the delay, ladies and gentlemen, but we are doing our best. At least it's someone else's it... fault. Yeah, <laughs> as with all things, hell at least competitive, it will be delayed and uh, there'll probably be no payoff for it. No. But it was kind of 82 AD, big shout out to 82 AD for letting us borrow their server. Now I guess check out and comes working again. Yeah, it is. Okay. Everything looks see. a bit more green. I don't know if I just... Uh, I apparently don't know if I'm somebody said up. that the saturation of... They changed the saturation of the map slightly. That would uh, make In the update, so like potentially... Oh, I can't get rid of the admin message. Press tab and then click yeah, the white. Click on it. It's a shame you nice. can't go upside down and up and camp. That'd be fun. So you could do, do like, like a, do like rolls and stuff. 
through the assets. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't do I was just trying to do a loop the loop for the ladies and gentlemen in Twitch chat, but apparently it's not possible. There'll be no RAF barrel rolls in in this cast of uh, seasonal. Sorry, I've been, I've been disconnected from the server. That's unlucky. Oh, is it because you're banned? I didn't want to say it on cam or on stream, but yeah. <laughs> There. Oh, it looks like I might have to go to single cam. You can message no, them. Yeah, I'm speaking to Stalin now. I'm worried on my OBS, it looks like it's a bit um, choppy when I'm moving the, the camera too much. Bit laggy, maybe, but hopefully that clears itself up. Might just be because I'm streaming into Discord as well for you to be able to see. Possibly. So we'll just have to. It, we'll just have to see how it goes. Maybe I can lower the quality in Discord actually. Right, I'm, I'm, I've, I've been allowed access. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's better. I've just freed up some resources on my PC by not streaming 1440 on. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's a big one. Yeah, I'm, I'm a clever man. What can I say? I'm technically proficient, you know. Rims and Flig. Some of the Glows lads. I do enjoy playing with. King Polo Loco. Poyo. Poyo. Le Dickhead. I'm sorry, you're going to have to suffer with some slightly reduced stream quality and just guess what's going on, but you know. That's alright, I'll be fine. We'll you know what, I've got my own camera. Ugh. Huh. That is true. The PC is restarting. Let me just cancel that if I can. <laughs> Literally zero issues. You know, please pay no attention to the issues. If I am... Oh my goodness, there's somebody on ESPT's side called TL Beatles. It's quite amusing. I'm going to park my camera here and then go grab some uh, water quickly. This is what happens when you diet too much. I try to turn my own PC off, apparently. <laughs> Just try and keep the ladies and gentlemen entertained for me for two minutes while I go and grab some water. And by water, I mean beer. Can't even speak to the chat because it's on a delay. Oh, no, oh shit, I should get a beer as well. Just be delightful. No, no, we, we're going to offset our beer grabbing. You be delightful for one minute, and then I'll be delightful for a minute. Okay. Right. See, I usually have a co-caster to deal with things like this, uh, so there's no dead air. Um, so... Honestly, this is when the stream starts and Estek's not here because he's getting fucking... he's getting tins. Uh, I don't even know he's got the right overlay up, you know? Oh, thank you for being yeah. delightful. I tried my best. Um, oh, I, I is... said one thing and then... <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic news. Alright, it's tonight. my turn to get tin now. This is what we're drinking tonight. It's Why? A... I can't see. Oh, it's on camera. It's called a liquid... It's called Life and Death. It's a, right. a classic IPA and it's 6.5%. <laughs> a couple of them sort you right out. 
Uh, I'm drinking left as well, so that's six percent. So you know, I'm gonna get more entertain. I'm gonna get more entertaining. Uh, the longer the stream goes on. <laughs> I don't know what I've got in. I think I've only got Stella. Ugh. Yeah. Right. Stella from a can is eh. All right. So it looks like we're still waiting to get started. So. Only apologise, looks like we've swapped to 82 AD server. I'm losing the will to live. I'm sure the players are just as frustrated. There's nothing worse than sitting there when you're hyped up on all the adrenaline before a game. Only yeah, you just want to get delayed. going, don't you? Yeah, mate, it's fucking awful, bro. Like, there's nothing worse than just sat there going, please, come on, come on, come on, come on. I hate sitting in the truck for like a minute after I've built the nodes. Like, even that feels stressful to me. Like, just sat there doing nothing. That's my favourite time, just chatting shit on prox chat with everyone, making noise and... I just get stressed man, I'm just there like, getting in my own head. It's like, it's like when you're sat on the, um, sat on the bus before a rugby game. It's exactly the same feeling. Well, I, I don't know, if it, I would walk to a... Well, okay, to... I mean like, to, to like a school game, yeah. right, when you go on like an away game, right, and you're sat, you're on the rugby coach, and it's the last like five minutes before you arrive at the opposition's grounds. Like that shit's like, whew, you feel it. I just remember playing college rugby and the coach trips were, um, they were messed up. And that's all I would like to say about that. Hey, well, we'll, we'll just leave it at that then, I guess. Yeah. But beer update, I've got one tin of Stella and then I've got a few bottles of Royal Dutch, which are don't think I've ever drunk before. I didn't buy it, oh, so I don't know where it's come from. Uh, but it's a five percent premium lager. So, yeah. I'd just like Hopefully to say we've right. also already got people on roofs. Of course. <laughs> In the fucking warm up, bro. We've already got people all over the fucking roofs. Probably not the British veterans. They're all in HQ. I can see them on the fucking map. Because <laughs> oh, he kind of actually went down there and he's been fucking shit on. <laughs> oh, he's put down a satchel apparently. Oh yeah, big vibes. It. All right, I should uh, get this started. Mate, hey, they're even putting tank markers down in the. Let's see if we can get this again. They're heads in the game, bro. They're, they're, they're so hyped, man. They've been preparing for it's this one for weeks. Sweating, sweating in the warm-up in the Polish veterans. That's to be fair, like, I, I often I often do funny thing, like, you know, try and get the MG up as far as I can go in the warm-up. And that way you can get mental edge, especially if it's like you solo or something. If you can kill the enemy on the beach, uh, whilst you're like, if you're MGing on the beach and killing them as they spawn in, that's like actual prime fucking uh, mental edge acquired. ESPT are winning the first tank battle. You're trying to on the map on. Huge win for ESPT's medium Sherman, bro. Fucking hell. Well, it's just mental that now, isn't it? Oh, it's crazy, bro. They're in their heads. Map was changed. Oh, shit. Map Let's, go. Let's go! Let's really go! 27 minutes late. Let's go! Jesus Christ, imagine we've had to be charming for this long. Oh. Very, very draining. It's like, I've got no charm left, bro. Like, that's that's it for the month. Well, that's We're what done. the bit is for. That is true. Let's try this uh, life and death stick now. The can was a bit mashed, but it didn't fizz everywhere, so I'm quite happy about that. Nice, we're on, we're on, we're on a winner today already. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh shit, it's the sound of strafing run. All arty players, no to fear. It's an esprit strafing run as well. Oh no! <laughs> That's, that's terrifying, man. As an Aussie player, fuck it out. Let's go. Oh, 
What have we got? Ooh, Gambo into checkpoint to cemetery. Cemetery is holdable, right? As allies. Yeah. It's like it's I would say it's one of the points that sort of needs the biggest, um, like, skill difference, honestly, to Yeah, um, yeah, it's, pre it's pretty, pretty hard to capture. I should just fucking mark their squads with the artillery mark. Got to ask them before the game. Already got some movement. The trucks are leaving HQ already. I think, as you expect, pretty much just SLs in them. A couple of riflemen as well. Um, I think that's a bit criminal from from PV playing allies and and taking riflemen. Like, there's so many classes with the with the Garand. I I, I done messed up and forgot to ask them which squad to join. I assume it's. I thought it was Adam, but I can't see. Uh, it's Tear. Look, he's got the arty mark. Uh, oh no, but he's he's full. Yeah. I have no idea. They're building arty defenses, man. <laughs> there are whoever, whoever TL beat us saying their arty is going down. I think that's not funny. I'm just going to join Tiny as a fucking medic and they can kick me if they want. So Polish veterans spawning another s transport in the south. Again, filled with riflemen, man. They've got a recon tank as well, just sat here waiting for the snipe. Yeah, they've got recon tank That's here Watsu. for a snipe as well, I reckon. Oh, mate, Wadsu the legend. He's going to take out that, four I trucks think, and a tank. I think the problem is that Free the Chicken has got... Uh, so the arty squad tear is actually full because they're using it for a snipe. So I'm just going to sit in this squad until that becomes free and then maybe try and swap over. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. A bit awkward. So what else Polish veterans have got? They've spawned another light tank. But no else that I can see. A couple of recon tanks, a couple of luxes. We can go to the open the maps and I'll just try and swap to my dual map. Yeah. I'll zoom over to check quickly. Yeah, sure. So I hear the uh the snipe coming already from, yeah. from that recon tank with lots of stuff rushing in already. Yeah, PV playing it safe. They've got one uh, Stuart that's going to be super late. He's still in, like, J6. That's crazy. Okay, we can just... Let's have a look and see if they've got... They've got supplies dropping already for garrisons, I can see. Trucks coming in. Puma are also pushing here. We saw what Muck Snapper did with a Puma earlier, so... I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> oh, mate, he just drove it straight through the... He drove it straight through the hard cap just as they're about to lose the mid and then skadoosh. Wiped all the outposts and flipped the point. I love that for him. Some snipes do, landing. Yeah, he's getting his snipes away. He's going directly onto checkpoint itself. Good deployment from... ESPT straight for the hard cap, basically. And nothing, nothing in the hard cap nothing. for... At all for Polish veterans. Yeah. See them here in the in the south. Um, just taking that wheat field. Ooh, I was close on that snipe. Ooh, <laughs> the ESPT sniped their own guys. That's not great. It is. That's so sick. The Stuart so charging in. Yeah, Polish veterans have lost their micro. I don't know when here, but they have not shot up the truck as well. And uh, I mean. Esprit very in control. Mate, hey, just rockets flying everywhere. Esprit are just like absolutely rolling in this car. The Lux is getting the Lux is lighting the fuck out of the out of the street. I think there's two Luxes lighting up there. Yeah, something just blew up on the front, I don't think. I think it's a truck, I assume. Everything's exploding here. I mean 
got MG set up by ESPT mansion, three story on the chimneys, like it's gonna be really fucking difficult to, to pull anything off here. The loads going on. I mean, you know, looking at this map situation, ESPT are just wildly in control, even though it keeps flickering. Yeah, because PV do have like this nice front line. But I think they've already it's, it's lost too slow. the spirits. They've it, it was far too slow. Um they also have Deep uh, Six, I'm just gonna find him. Uh Gallic here in uh SL on a supply truck. Ding a spree to a to a whammo Gary or Yeah. He's uh he is close to a spree's backline uh garrison here, so they'll know he's there. But he doesn't have a clue about it. So we've got we've got the Panzer IV. We've got SBT's Panzer IV kind of like holding the wheat field, but I can't see the the medium Sherman. Do we know where the medium Sherman he's is? He's in he's in the top corner of the wheat field and he's just spotted oh, the okay. Panzer IV. I think he's just repositioning now. He's gonna try and peek him. His MGs are absolutely blasting the the wheat field from the three story house. Oh, the media meets a rocket. It's always rough. Whoever this Chinese character funny guy is. And then medium does go down. Not to the P4 though, the P4 is just sat no. there. AT gets rockets. the kill. And I still hear the Lux from the... Oh, this is a great MG spot from Villain. I like this one myself. Behind me. Just holding down that wheel. IPV have a solid solid front line here, but ESPT are already pushing up through. Yeah, of course it's fear not. Fear not US Ranger and uh... he's ready to get a garrison up immediately, and then they're going to flood. I think it looks like it's already contested on the cemetery. Yeah, and I can see that one of uh, Polish veterans uh, garrison is lit up. I think it's US Ranger here who's tagged. He's AT as well, so that's going to be a dangerous yeah. situation for any garrison. Oh, and he's putting AT mines down the road as well. What a rat! I love it. He's going for it. He's just clearing the house. Has he spotted the garrison, do we think? Not yet, no. but he, of the massive deployment of that. Yeah. Get I think he's kind of griefed kill. by... If he just sat there and waited for a sec... <laughs> Farrell <laughs> was that not hurts. having any of that, mate. No, he was not risking no that he shit, was... was he? Jesus <laughs> Christ. ESPT already got three SLs like, massively in the front door as well here. Like, this is... This is pretty yeah, dangerous. This is what we saw Pepsi from... And Digi Shadow. It's what we saw it's from... Greyhounds as well. Today, on this exact point layout, in terms of, you know, checkpoint into cemetery, they just hard mashed straight into the town and took control of this huge pocket by the church and then it's really hard to push back in. Let's just see what's going down a bit closer to the point except just pushing right out and post veterans have been pushed all the way back into the G line. It doesn't look like any SLs were able to reset at all. Um, we have we have still got some PV guys. Just there's one PV guy left in the hard cap, and he's just gone down. And we've got an AT near Contratex near the. Uh, maybe might be able to get a shot onto the P4 here. Who's... It does look like you know he's there. He he in, in the in the back line E6 taking out the spree garrison. I mean, they didn't immediately lose the point, right? Which is. Which is fine. I think Juno knows that he's uh, knows that he's there, but Garrison does go down. I think if anything, he might be doing a spree a favour. They'll just use that. Oh. Quite far back. <laughs> he got it with the MG there. Based. I mean, Esprit have really good map control here. It's going to be really difficult because they've already pushed all the way up to Maison to Creek almost with the the Puma from Free the Chicken. 
and they've got SLs pushing up as well. So this this area of the map's really hard to repush because the MGs from checkpoint, although the SPT free the chicken has completely gooned it and crashed his tank into a trench. So let's all laugh at free the chicken. Uh -huh. I've got I've got a soundboard for this one. <laughs> Oh no, it's gone. It's it's greyed out on the fucking stream deck. <laughs> um, okay. But I can see Fear not here. He's just he's just hanging about in a trench. He's getting an OP up now. Yeah, I'm that's cemetery, really nice. so it's hot though. It, yeah, I mean there is a post veteran player running the other way. Craft, you gotta turn around, bro. Fear not here. Just... I mean, I, I said this in the, the pre-game, really, like, he'll, he'll just play these really wide, like, he moves and he'll take his time and yeah, just keep getting behind them. And we can see they've actually, the SPT have actually and... rotated their, their Lux from checkpoint through the town. They did just lose one Lux, but they've got a second Lux up. Yeah, Andy getting a couple of kills here, drops the arty marker as well. Just again holding that angle. We've got no one in the front side of the soft cap for symmetry yet from uh, ESPC. From Spree, yeah. And, and Polish veterans look pretty Solid. comfortable there, but this. You've got 1200 Paradox Crims in the back lines. No, that's where it's dangerous, it's right? Where you get well. these guys. Yeah. I mean, 1200 here is like FU42 only warrior. The SPT's strongest. Fucking dies. Don't know where from. Paradox just takes even. out. Uh, I'm gonna call him K4, yeah. In the back, we've got some nonsense and shenanigans here. Crim's trading out with Private Ricky. Yeah, and Paradox. TV on... does kind of make me think private, you know. Yeah, Crim's Paradox also getting... on the back garrison. This is, this is, this is good bit. It's gonna I love be a struggle. That one team has Chinese names and one team has Polish. It's uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a challenge. Bad time for two English casters. Yeah, sorry everyone, it's gonna be butchering. Crims gets that garrison. Yeah, Paradox was killed trans down the northern one. But PV with three garrisons on them, man, it's... Is that it? I feel like it's only a matter of time. Yeah, Krim's taking the supplies as well. I'm just going to switch into... ...a different squad, so I'm going to redeploy briefly, so just... We've got a nice no aerial worries. view from... Um, Indra's cast... Uh, Indra's cam here, and you can see, like, loads of the blueberries from... PV are holding the front line pretty steadily, and if they can just keep them off that open uh, front side, then maybe it'll be okay. But Spree, I mean, really, really going around the back here. Did you shadow as well, set? Craft has spotted the uh, supply truck they've sent around. Just, uh, just holding it. And fucking a spree just all over them in the back. Absolutely all over them. For them, for sure. Just had some complaints that the stream's a bit choppy. It's probably because of the, um, the, the dual camming, so I'm just going to turn off my stream to Indra and we'll just have to kind of play it by ear based off what we can both see on our separate cameras. Yeah, it'll be uh, fine. Hopefully it'll be pretty free. You can just see the trucks going down, but ESPT are now starting to make some cap progress onto the cemetery as they've moved their troops yeah. up into the front they door. They take the tank up as well. Yeah, we've got this P4 just charging across the, charging across the field here. Yeah, no one really not. contesting him either. I haven't seen any heavy tanks yet on the front line. But the yeah, SPT are bringing up their first Tiger on the Rooney Gamma as well. Yeah, P4 
PVF on H8, and I think they've spotted the um, the Panzer IV, but they don't have a decent line of sight. So that's a worry. And this huge spot, uh, spawn below cemetery from PV, not doing much to see. Yeah, the cap starts to flip the other way. Fear and UF range both die. I think the big the big point will be these two tanks, this Lux and this. Oh my goodness, the P4 just absolutely shit on the guys behind that. <laughs> shit, man, that was like a big swarm over like three or four of them. Sadly, their outpost is still up, so it's likely that this tank is going to manage to get. Do you see that? Do you see Jatsky fucking ricochet himself and then get blown to bits by Artie? Oh, man, this is just miserable for them. I can't believe that this outpost is still up behind the, the shed. The PV outpost is still up. Oh man, that's going to be. Please don't spawn there again, guys. <laughs> That's miserable for them. That's really sad. Yeah, I'm just it's watching good. this whole Polish veteran spawn just get melted get fucking by wiped the by two guys. Yeah. Not, even, not even the P4, just like the right oh, like, This is just. Unreal. This is going to be really hard now. Now they've got these two two tanks that are in the front door, basically. Even with this large spawn wave, I think. ESPT are probably going to just be able to clean them up because Finn or spotted the spawn wave of this garrison. He's going to pick a few off behind. Nobody's turning around. Nobody's turning around. Please, somebody turn around and kill Finn or please, somebody. The Polish veterans have nothing on uh, Levue. And Digi Shadow, uh, he's doing his best Finn impression. Around. Right in front of gets the garrison up. Oh my God. He's going straight for, for the last point. Chris as well. Vinod has basically wiped out the entire spawn wave for Polish veterans and called in the RT. Oh, huge RT from Adam. <laughs> that was vile. And now the Lux is coming in to see if he can steal any kills that are left over, but he's just going to drive the tank into a, into a tree stump. Kind of yeah, it looks like he's uh, going to go over. It's like a bit, a bit stuck here. In shot with the bombing run just after the nick of time. Down to his own tank as well. Oh, it's a uh, PV bomb. Sorry. Um, Holy shit. Oh, it's a double one. It's a double one. Double one. Oh my god. Rip FPS. Yeah, and this massive spawn burst here from, from post veterans. 1200's already, already running in. He's fucking spawn wave. From uh, Digi Shadows Garrison as well, Chris, ESPT's only shit poster, um, pushing <laughs> respect you as well. Poster. Honestly, so, so we know it's possible Chris. to hold the view, right? SLK did it for like sixty or seventy minutes today, and even recap Cemetery versus Greyhound, another top team. So, do we think that there's any any chance for Polish veterans to turn this around, or do we think this is just more I time think this, spent in in the studio uh, than in the game. I think it could be. I mean, Chris is starting to clear the view already. I've just locked onto him on the cam. Yeah, just starts to take the point as well. Contested for a second. Lig and Takahara are now behind that garrison. Takahara does go down though. These guys have really got to do a better job of protecting their spawns. Flicks somehow managed to walk past, so maybe there's. Yeah. Chris goes down, but Paradox is there already. I'll say as well. one point is that PV seem to be stacking their outposts far too close to each other. Yeah, you can see that with uh, Baker and Echo here, especially, and then to a lesser degree, Prep and Charlie. They're in such a combined space. And but you get all of them really right. close, and then one person, one grenade is just over for that for that outpost. Yeah, I mean, if if uh, an unlucky grenade lands here in this bush, then uh, that's two squads just out of the game. Um, on a Jova. So at least, you know, at least PV have got their 76s on the point, right? They've got 176 on the point. I mean, Paradox is hiding inside the point. He gets a kill on to... Yeah, and the out for blood here. You can see XL pushing in as well. They're really just out. trying to clear out this game again. as soon as possible. They're not hanging around. Paradox does want to to Ricky, but I mean, no real front door for Bird of Dragons here. They've 
they've they've, they've got somehow sandwiching the the ESBT front line is somehow behind the Polish veterans front line from what I can tell from looking at the maps here. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's all a bit scrappy for PV and they've the, that's the third OP down here. Do you want to have a look at the, the two maps here, see if we can spot where the tanks yeah. are? So, PV have uh, two heavies up, one on this little OP cluster. Um, this should be... This is horrible. Um, one on the view, they've got a medium behind the point as well, and it, people running for HQ, light tanks just spawned in as well, I don't know if that's the default one or uh, deliberate spawn. Takahara coming in here, you know, if, if these PV guys don't don't get their kills, there's three fucking OBs gone, guys. Luckily, Sleepy gets him, but... Is this even more coming for Yeah, I think it's just kind of rough for them at this point. Uh, like, their front, the SPT's front line is really wide, and... Uh, I just can't see, I can't see how they're going to come back from this, to be honest with you, because... If you look at how wide the SPT's front line is playing, it's playing all the way from H3 down to H6. And I don't think there's any recourse for PB to walk through. Like, maybe if maybe if PB can trade out some tanks and then push their front line up, but I don't think they're going to force their way through man man for man. No, I agree with you, and I'm just watching them here. Like, Kuba getting some really important kills, keeping those OPs up just a little bit longer to like, get another spawn wave in, but... Okay, Excel goes down, I was about to say he's getting close. But they just take him, but... They're just they're they're outnumbered here, and I'd argue they're outgunned. You know, Paradox is there, Fig is there, Flig is there, Takahara is there. You know, all guys that are really proven shooters, and Takahara pushing out grenade yeah, kills. It's just gonna be the penultimate Polish veteran. I mean, PV are now kind of having to turtle inside the hard cap. I know once you start to turtle inside the hard cap, it's it's game fucking over. Jover. So you're playing offensive mode at that point, right? And like, yeah. well, we're, we're just... about to watch these OPs go down, I think. No, PV gets spawn wave off. Rocket misses from Chris. Holy shit, that was like a firing squad from PV there. But XL's coming around the corner. XL gets done by Zeri. Can they get enough? Can they do enough? I don't think so. Oh, one more spawn wave. We're about no. to find oh. out He's in the same place. I think two of them have moved, but yeah, I think it's the just last one there goes. They're just going to get picked off on this front line, and then they're getting yeah. shot from too many angles now. Tom does manage to trade Mr. Chinese name, but the SPC getting so close to this garrison now. Oh, and there's a there's an MG uh, set up watching yeah. the cross. Like they can't even get out from behind it now. It's really rough, and Hitman Alex is just going to. Wait, gonna press right. along there and burger from the burger nation is just he's just gonna fucking slaughter them if they try and crop but if they try and make it through that gap like uh, he can just see yeah them. there's nothing they can do he can just see them and hitman alex is on the other side of the fence and he's just cleaning them up it's, it feels like delaying the inevitable rather than yeah there you go they try yeah. to make the cross and he just goes down you know, slowly, really, slowly, I mean, like man by man, they're just pushing up and getting control. Ames takes out Alucardus's OP. Yeah, Chris, I, Chris and XL are on the garrison. I wanted to see Chris go for the rocket, but he has missed a couple. So, <laughs> maybe the Stuka goes in. No idea where. Point somewhere. Just hear it. it looks like Chris it, does die, looks like but both of the tanks are alive. So, one OP left here somewhere. Uh, it looks like they tried to they tried to stuker a medium 75 that's on the the top map edge, but it didn't even kill the medium, which is kind of unfortunate. And villain, if he's lucky, just needs to get this one kill. Does not, but he you know finished off that pretty brutal wipe of that this, this i5. I it's kind of set up the both veterans had. Leg and Apollo as well, just pushing further in the south. And the Arty's just slamming the front door now. 
Have we seen any ESPT heavy tanks? What are they up to? They're miles away. Let me see what they're up to. Do they have something? It looks like they're just they're sort of chilling on the crossroads near cemetery. So, and I think they maybe they're waiting for a third tiger before they push because. PV have got two 76s and a medium, so maybe they're waiting to get the third, but let's see what... We've got an advancing Tiger, Acadian and yeah. his squad. The Polish veterans are looking out the map, they're looking a bit more stable on the, on the last point now than they were sort of five, ten minutes ago. Um, they actually seem to have like an established front line. Um, the, the OP spacing's a little better, maybe uh, I'd want to plug some gaps here. Um, like knowing how ratty Spree are, yeah, you know it's very easy for them to come through. You can kind of use that space. Um, I think that's fair. But I do like how PV feel a bit more robust here. Yeah, I think that that that. They're holding out, right? And like that's kind of as much as you can ask, you know, like reasonably from maybe not the most experienced team. I mean, ESPT, Fignaldo's even setting up an AT gun to just pound the point. <laughs> like, that's just rude. That's kind of like uh, very ent entertaining. Oyo oh, oh, Loco is going going for a play with his STG he's going to run into Mayfu. Oh, Mayfu absolutely. Yeah, I just saw that in the corner of my screen. Fucking mullered him, bro. Wasn't even close. Dude didn't I mean, have a chance there. How fun north is we are here. Shaka Zulu and yeah, Trojan going, both running map edge. Yeah, going map edge here. There's a lot of cover on that side of map edge. They are going to run into LJT though. And Peravitin. 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 Herberton. Shaka Zulu. No, LJT knows Zulu's there. They're going to double peek. Oh, no, if they double peek properly instead of blocking each other. I'm sorry, but Kraft has absolutely baited LJT. Though. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, if blocked I was him LJ, on the peak I'd be as well. Fucking oh, furious. Bro. LJT, bro. You got so sold pissed. down the fucking river, bro. Unlucky. Shaka's going to take that OP easy yeah. as they like. And now they're, behind the, now they're behind the tanks and they'll get good marks on them. Yeah. So their crew's actually split, so it's actually like a, a three man crew is split between two tanks there, which is kind of fun. Yeah, and they're like going to use the 75 as cover. The 76 is going to spin and maybe try and clear out that map edge. ESPT are trying an airhead play here. Bombing on airhead over the point. So I mean, it works in pub lobbies. Out. Why that would it true. work in a seasonal match? And ESPT have actually made some ingress onto the hard cap. Yeah, because he did use the, the bomb from. That's a nice nice placement on the end, actually, on the outside of the wall where it can be covered by, by the friendlies. I think this might actually work. You'll definitely get a nice spawn move off it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can't really see. I think we can still. PV can not... still bring the tanks into the hard cap, maybe. Jaeger goes, goes down, but Apollo, I think for me, he's being a bit too aggressive here. Yeah. Only, only two people off the airhead, which is a bit pathetic. The 76 yeah. takes one shell from the Tiger. And just immediately pulls back to repair. Yeah, I would love to see a rep station. Oh, they, they, they do have one. Yeah. I can hear it going. Is it this tiger? Oh mate, that's a dirty little fucking peek from the, from the tiger. If that's the angle he's picking, that's filthy. That's filthy actually. What a peek from the tiger. Bombing run comes in from Pro's backhand and does get the airhead. However, you can see now just along the fucking road, Spree. Really pushing hard now. Yeah, I think as soon as we saw the airhead, it was always going to be a challenge. Maybe let's let's take a cam on the let's take a dual cam on the um, 
Tiger versus 76 because the Tiger just took a second shot there. He's actually yeah, pulling yeah. back to repair. Which is kind of upsetting that we just, just about missed the... Uh, and the Tiger almost runs over Evo Platypus there. I think it's just going to be a matter of they're going to repair. If you just stick with that and then shout and I'll go back to it if they start fighting again. Yeah, you can see C Unicorn and Clutch uh, out to repair. I think that's Adam team Adam's RT team killing uh, ESPT here as well, actually, as they try and cross into the hard cap. It's a Kinderick special. <laughs> 76 takes a rocket from behind. Who the fuck was that? Fignaldo. He's just got into a good position. Gets a couple of rockets in. And unlike most of the rockets I've seen, and this is now the second match I've co casted this weekend. They actually connect. Um. <laughs> I mean, I, I co-casted the seasonal quarterfinals or semi-finals between Greyhounds and ESPT, right? And they had um, some absolutely fucking batshit insane rocket PvP from ESPT. So, like, you know, this is absolutely something that we can expect to see from ESPT is, is rocket PvP. They're not quite as good at it as Reason is. Reason is the number one rocket PvP bandit, but like as a team, the average rocket PvP banditry is quite high. You know, you gotta respect it. I think it looks like the same going out peak here. But the tiger is. The tiger's. Oh, yeah, he's he looking went for the see second. Anything. He's looking for the second. He's looking for the second uh, 76 that's coming around to the southeast actually. Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, what's he shooting? He's shooting something really fast up. <laughs> Fucking Esprit are in mid HQ with two SLs. As you um, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. and assault players. Yeah. And it almost looks like he's looking at the arty guy. What are you doing down here? No, he's not. All right. You reckon Inchon's giving them all a big slap on the wrist and say, don't <laughs> do that again? Tut tut tut, that was naughty. Yeah. Very naughty. I mean, I think right now we need a round of applause for Polish veterans. It wasn't a 15 minute stomp. We have now been casting for the game for 33 minutes, so congratulations to Polish veterans. You haven't, you know, you weren't 12 minute wiped, so I think that's put a lot of people's predictions in the toilet. But we, as I say that, we are seeing Digi Shadow Steve hit my Alex. And Paradox attempt to make the front door play. There's so many SLs, SLs down here. They've got plans. And Excel's inside the. Yeah, it's Polish veterans lose at the tank. Oh, there's some six as well. Excel with his. Oh, Excel has, Excel has a visual on the garrison behind the point with his SDGs. Might Maybe he's going to go try. No, he's no, going to satchel the tank. He's going to satchel the tank. No, he's... What's he doing? Maybe he's already... He might have already used his satchel, to be fair. True. Maybe. Oh, it looks like the um, repair systems. The rep station just went down. But that garrison now has gone for PV and... I mean, a spree. They're just pretty much completely right in control of the hard cap. Yeah, I think... Come out and look at the map here and... Again, PV look like all right in the north and the south where they've got oh, their garage. I mean, just look at the start. Like, it's completely flat line from the SPT. This is masterful front line behaviour. Like, you've got to respect it. I mean, the guys the guys in the tank are just trying their best, but I think the weight of the SPT's infantry is just too great. Paradox is even sneaking down the garrison behind him. Tom knows, but is he going to save the time? Oh, he the rocket was just a second too late and they lose the garrison. Yeah, well, I think with that Panzer garrison going down, here. Panzer IV is charging the... It's Kaonashi. Kaonashi's trying to do some shenanigans. He wants to lift it. The tiger's there, he's already got a bit as well. Probably not the same guy I would have shot at. And there you go. What do you think? Do you think Polish veterans can come back from this? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no, but I'd like to be proven wrong. Me too. 
<laughs> like if they if, if they could come back from this, then I could learn something from this game. And Polish OP. parents have basically no fun in the soft cap, let alone the hard cap, but I believe it. I believe it's one of those Joe Vins. It's just cleaning up the last couple of kills, everyone playing for the last last frags yeah. for their stats. Go get the stats up. Yeah, buddy. So congratulations to Esprit de Corps, but I think I want to say a bigger congratulations to two Polish veterans. Two Polish veterans, because yeah, they they played much better than I think most people gave them credit have given them credit for before the game. And I think that as as a group of young to hell at loose players, you know, lasting 35, 40 minutes versus the Top second team. place seasonal team last year and the second place HEO seasonal team this year and the APL winners is like pretty respectable actually, you know, like you can't you can't fault them for that. Yeah, not at all, and I think they should be proud of themselves and I think the only way they have to go is up. Yeah, I mean, I can't see that that was a good performance. They had decent garrison placements. They had a flat front line. They could have used getting one of their trucks to the hard cap a bit earlier at the start of the game. You know, you can't ask for much more than that from from quite a new team. You know, they, I think they played well. Their, their, their tanks stayed alive for a really long time as well. Actually, I didn't really see much. Many tanks going down at all, actually, from either Not side. Not until the so, end, no. No, so you know, then that's. I think that's also something to be proud of from from PV. So, congratulations to them. I mean, obviously, well done for to ESPT. Their first five zero win this seasonal. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I was just thinking. Yeah, oh, oh that's, a, that's an unlucky one, you know. But like, it's always good to win. It's always good to win these games because it gets you the. Um, the head-to-head -head rating, right? Because if there's a draw in the number of wins, the groups are decided by the head-to-head the -head rating. But, um, yeah, so, you know, pretty good game. A respectable effort from Polish veterans and pretty pretty clinical from ESPT. I think, you know, they probably could have ended it faster, but actually I would say it was it was actually more respectful of them to go for kind of like the slower more correct methodical play you know they were a lot more surgical than you see because you know they weren't they weren't trying to speed run it i would say what, what do you think no about not that? at all like i think they played with a lot of respect to polish veterans and i think you know the fact that last week they they um they, they beat tl or the week before um you probably threw a bit in um to Esprit's plans, um, but ultimately I yeah. think that result was never never going to be in doubt. Yeah, I think you know they were always the top team in that group, right? So it's it's not surprising that they're going to be pushing. I mean, I think the way that seasonal seeded the groups this year has been really good, and I think that you know unfortunately it's going to it's going to create some matchups at the start of the tournament which are going to you know be a bit more one sided, right? And it's going to make those games a bit less exciting than you would have liked to have thought but I think that it will improve the quality of the games later on in the tournament so it's going to generate the most good matches possible yeah you, know, I'm, you don't I'm want to have people little, a little disappointed that it's um, it's going to be a spin the wheel for matchups I would have loved to have seen a properly seeded oh, I think um, so much final stage like I, Maybe, I, guess but I think it's just like it's so it's so difficult to to do that as as a seasonal organizer, right? Like there's a lot of stress and pressure for them to get it right. For sure, yeah. but I mean, uh, Hilo is well at the moment. It's a bit bugged because of the reset every season. Um, but I, I I think just purely based off the competition, you you definitely can see that based off the group stages. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, maybe but, I don't know. Like, I'm not an organizer, and I don't. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes, right? Uh, no, but I it's, think uh, it's like, stressful. The, the the way they seeded the groups should um, allow for the best matchups to happen, right? Like even if it's spin the wheel later on, 
it yeah. doesn't matter because all of the teams that are getting through should be the teams that get through, right? So if you think about it in that in that kind of respect, then like it doesn't really matter what the matchups are in in the knockout stages because they'll all be good matchups. That's my opinion, anyway. Yeah, I think anyway. the fact there might be a bit of variety in the finals is is nice as well. Like maybe playing teams you wouldn't expect for saying. Yeah, yeah I think so. So, what's your predictions for a seasonal final, Indra? Who who do you want? Who do you want to see in the finals? It's going to be XD, and then Ooh. it will be one of WCH. Uh, or Greyhounds. That's my prediction. I don't think Kispri have it, have it in them to go all the way to the final again. And um, this okay. time around, um, I think it probably going to be WCH. Um, but okay. you know, having played, uh, played a spree in the HCA final, and then a few weeks ago, um, like they feel noticeably worse um, than they did. So maybe I think they I think they might have the same I mean if I might delve into the, the psychology of it, you know, of being in hell at least. I haven't played the game since early access. I think that like once you win stuff or get close to winning stuff, it changes the hunger you have for it. So yeah. ESPT came second, right? And I think like if it's anything like how DC felt after we won seasonal, then it might be more that they've kind of like the pl- the individual players aren't feeling it quite as much you know it's kind of it's it's hard to keep such a large roster of players always you know happy right so yeah i mean 50 players is fucking batshit yeah Absolutely it's crazy batshit. it's crazy for a competitive like game of any any description you know like be it a board you know like from board games to sports to anything a team of 50 players is fucking mad and then to keep a roster of like 70 players you know and at dc we had what like 55 60 players right and like that was hard enough so like being on some of the teams with larger rosters is like must be like really challenging yeah i mean i'm uh i'm glad i'm not all good because i know it's, you know so much work goes into keeping these players yeah players of course happy. yeah it's gonna be really really difficult but um so I I think I think we've probably said about as much as we uh, can bore everyone to death with about our opinions, you know. So yeah. maybe let's let's leave it for the time being and wish both of these teams the best of luck. So best of luck to ESPT in their seasonal run. I hope you make a deep run, and I hope we can play against each other again because the games between XD and ESPT are always challenging and entertaining. And I hope that Polish veterans, I you know, I hope you guys make a deep run as well. But in the off chance yeah, that you sure. don't, good luck. And I hope that you take all the experiences from seasonal forwards and take the things that Indra and I have said as criticism, but to, to help build what you're doing. And good luck in Div 2 of the ECL. Any final words, yeah. Indra? Yeah, I just want to say for all the shit that I've given Esprit, um, some of the most fun matches I've ever had on this game is playing against them, and especially, especially recently... Um, it almost feels more like a like a bit of a cat and mouse chess game kind of deal. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's been been really rewarding. So I will still give them shit. But <laughs> of I course, also do wanna, it wouldn't be say how they lose if we actually, giving each other yeah, shit. Exactly. But thank them for uh, for actually making me enjoy the game a little bit once a week. Yeah, I mean, it's always fun to have a rival, right? And you exactly. know, like I hope I hope we can continue to be rivals on a competitive side and that the banter becomes uh more, more friendly toxic. As, we... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> as we all as we all mellow out a bit more maybe you know as as the stakes kind of as as hell at loose twilights a bit you know maybe maybe we can be a bit uh a bit more friendly i know i could personally try a bit harder but you know here we are so i'm gonna love you and leave you Thank you yeah. very much, Indra, for co-casting with, My pleasure. with me. And it seems that luckily cutting out the streams in Discord stopped it from being choppy. So I will yes. see you And time. luckily I didn't sleep through this one. Um. <laughs> yes, I forgot to give you any shit for that, for sleeping through my last cast. I can't believe I let you get away with that. <laughs> I'm just but. glad we made it happen. 
Yeah, of course. I hope I hope I can welcome you on uh, the next the next one that I do because it's always fun. Yeah, that'd be sick. Or you on mine? But I'll catch you a bit. Of course. See you later. See you later. Thank you.